Hi, everybody. My name is Danica Joan, and welcome to Custody Matters Live. We have two people with us here. We have, of course, Dawn McCarty, uh, whom we've had on before, and we've also brought on Dorsey Pruder. Dorsey Pruder is uh, the founder and the CEO of Conscious Co-Parenting Institute. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome to me. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> I, I'm excited I to have you here. Background, except for Dawn, she got stuck in the office. They did not get the memo. <laughs> so, I even decided to bring. I made this. It's my time. I love it. Oh, I love it. I love it's that. Awesome. You made that. Beautiful. I did. I did. I, uh, I did that, and I tell you, okay. All right, I'll bring you an embarrassing thing. I was looking for masks, and of course, all the masks and the buffs have all been cleared off the shelves. So I created something else. I created my mask. Do you have any idea I what it. I made it from? Um, let me see the fabric again. Oh, it's it a bathing suit. A, yeah, is it a bathing suit wrap? It's, it's, it's brand new underwear. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I the keeping brand new. <laughs> yeah, brand new. We have a laugh of the day at work, and one of the things that I sent them was if you can't find a fabric store that's open and you don't have anything else available, there's always the you can use the bra. Bra, I saw that online. Yeah. <laughs> Mine would fit over my head, so probably yeah. it would be a whole mask. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, you know, in, during this, this pandemic where everybody is just isolated, we feel like we're on house arrest, this can bring up a lot of anxiety, um, mm -hmm. even depression and, you know, uh, just this whole- like humor is good. It's good for us to have these laughs. Really good. <laughs> I've been doing, um, I've been holding virtual dinner parties. Uh, with oh, that's a great idea. On Zoom. Um, what else? I've been, I've been walking. Um, like I do every day and trying to figure out, like understanding that if I'm feeling anxious and stuff like that, I can only imagine parents that do not have like a loving relationship with their, with their child. And in this situation, maybe the other parent uh, is withholding the child and feeling like it's being endorsed by the circumstances. Mm -hmm. So, so Dorsey, tell us, share with us a little bit about, um, what you do, I know you do a variety of things, mm -hmm. but um, share with us, uh, to the, for the viewers, you know, what would really, um, I guess be of most benefit for them to know about you. Okay. So as you said, I'm the CEO and founder of the Conscious Co-Parenting Institute, and we're really focused on meeting the divorcing parents need wherever they are in the process. So people that are just starting out, we help them create conscious co-parenting plans, but we're probably best known for our reunification strategies and solutions to solve the um, epidemic known as parental alienation. So families that are experiencing emotional cutoffs from their children. Um, and really we have a solution wherever you are in that process. So if it's just starting out, how to prevent it from happening. And then if you're full on alienated from your kids, how to reestablish and restore your, your unbreakable bond. So I'm the person who coined the phrase, the chosen parent. So I, I kind of giggle to oh, myself really? because I see the chosen parent is all over the internet now. And, um, but that was me. Um, and I truly believe and know in my heart that targeted parents are really the chosen parent. So what that means is your children chose you because they know that you are the leader of their family. So they know that you're the more stable parent and you're the one that loves them unconditionally and you're the one that's going to do the work that needs to be done to recover the entire family system. So. I, I talk about this a lot, that it's not a isolated issue that one person is all bad and one person is all good. It's a whole family po problem that requires a whole right. family solution. So we have to recover all members of the family. And um, this is what sets us apart from a lot of people that work in this space for reunification. So we really do focus on implementing skill building for the entire family system. It's really important. I'm hearing what I'm hearing, the chosen uh, parent. 
Um, and it's and I, it's sort of counterintuitive because yes. they're like, wait a minute, they chose the one that's alienating me, mm -hmm. that, but not not so much. It's like you were the you're the one that unfortunately was like the fall guy. You were the one that they felt like was it was safe to separate from because this other one is is so broken or or whatever, or it's not mm -hmm. safe to have that choice. Just, separate from yeah. this parent. Right. So usually what happens, not usually every time in this family dynamic, the children, when, when parents divorce, you know, all parents don't do it right in the beginning. So when you have a separation of a relationship, you, you kind of toss all your parenting skills out the window and you're, you're destabilized by your own emotional response to the divorce or the separation. And so parents bear down on their children emotionally and causing, you know, anxiety and stress in the child. And normal range parents will lift back up pretty quickly to say, oh, you know, I need to manage my own emotions and get my, my shit together, for lack of a better term, and, you know, parent my child. But parents that have, that are emotionally destabilized or have any kind of pathology, personality disorder in anywhere in the spectrum of that, you know, they continue to bear down on the child. The child in these families feel responsible for emotionally parenting the, ch the parent that has unmanaged emotions. So they're doing everything that they can to try to manage that parent. And, um, the, and, and they know that the other parent is going to be okay. It's a subconscious thing that's happening. They're not consciously making those decisions. It's really an unconscious decision. And it's usually not until much later in life, and Dawn would probably agree with me here, that the, uh, the authentic child emerges out of the fog and realizes what happened. You know, um, a lot of these parents or these kids become parents, they get alienated, they're alienators. You know, I don't like labels, but that's a, that's a, a label or a term everybody that I'm sure watches your show is aware of. Um, but one of our goals is always to remove labels. So when, when families come into our world and everybody has a label, I remind everybody that the beautiful thing about a label is eventually we can like tear it off, tear it up and throw it in the garbage can that we don't have to keep our labels and labels hold us stuck in our victim mindset. And, you know, at any time we can choose to no longer live in the mindset of the victim and throw it in the trash. And, so one of the techniques I teach parents is, um, you know, you guys have probably heard this around as well, which is the, I, I love the proverbial trash can, you know, when the, when the child comes on your parenting time and it's the toxic dump, I'm like, open up your trash can. Don't forget to put in a pretty smell good liner, let your child dump all their rubbish in, then cinch it up and throw it in the trash. You don't hold it into your trash can, you get rid of it. Or I like to now call it the treasure chest. Um, you know, but transform it into something healthy and unconditionally loving for your child. So you can, you can, you can transform the rubbish into jewels, ways for your children to love both parents. Because the truth is your kids love both parents. They do. Even when they're terrible to you and saying the worst things you could ever imagine, you know, they actually love both of you. And um, it's our responsibility as the chosen parents to teach our children how to be in relationship with both parents and to take the burden that the other parent is placing on them away from them and toss it out as useless rubbish. Does that make sense? I love it. it Dawn, does. you can kind of relate to this, can't you? Yeah. Yes, I can. I like how you said that because it's you want that parent is your safe parent you we don't necessarily make the choice on where we are where we are we mm -hmm. are um taken into that place and we are just surviving mm -hmm. and we're doing everything we can to survive it's frustrating and children don't have that mental maturity or capacity sometimes to understand what's really going on mm -hmm. so they don't process it like we process it we're adults mm -hmm. Now we understand how we're going to deal with what types of conflict. And sometimes I think we forget that the child doesn't know that skill. Mm -hmm. So it's important that we, and I love how you, the proverbial trash can. I love that. <laughs> just, you know, put the garbage bag over you if you have to. And let <laughs> right. it you know, and just, but just right. you can throw it away. Don't let that stick to you like glue or Velcro because 
that if they're venting to you, they needed to vent. Exactly. They need you to, they, you're just their sounding box and they yeah. need to get that off their chest. That's how they deal with it. And when we yeah. can't constantly tell them, stop doing that, you're basically telling them, stop communicating with me. Right. So I always say to people, if you feel yourself getting defensive, you're taking it personally. And as a parent, we should never take those things personally. So if you feel the defense rising up, close your eyes, take a deep breath in through your nose, count to seven, hold on seven, visualize the defense getting cocooned in a bubble, and then breathe out on seven and just get rid of the defense. And just remember that your role is a leadership role. As a chosen parent, you're the leader of your family. And so how do you transform what the child is saying from a place of defensiveness like no that didn't happen no that's not true you know to I understand what you're saying and having an empathetic response to the child mm -hmm. I hear you what I hear you saying is you're frustrated I can hear that you're upset right so you don't have to agree to what the child is saying but but have an empathetic response to the child's situation yeah but frequently happens is the targeted parent is traumatized as well. And I'm just gonna be bold because anybody who knows me knows that's the way this sister rolls. So I'll just say this, it's not your child's responsibility, targeted parents, as much as I love you, to resolve your traumatization. So you cannot lead your children to the place of recovery if you don't recover yourself from your own childhood trauma. So you brought yourself into this relationship with the other parent for a reason, probably unconsciously and most likely to create the trauma bond. And when you or the other person, however the marriage ended, it ended. And um, somebody needs to elevate their consciousness so the family can elevate out of that level of trauma, right? And, it, and it's you, the chosen parent. And I've worked with thousands of parents and I hear this all the time, like, yeah, but you don't understand. And, but it is the other parent that are doing all these terrible things. And it's like, stop, <laughs> stop. You chose to have children with that parent. At some point, there was something about that. However, that came about that you had kids with this person. And even if they're doing all of these things and not invalidating what you're saying, you as the person standing on the other side of the mirror have the opportunity to transform how you're showing up so that you can even lead the pathogenic parent out of the pathology. And I've seen it time and time and time again. You know, Dr. Childress and I have argued about this in the past where he's like, nope, nothing you do for the narcissist, nothing you do for that person, da, 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 da. and I'm like, dude, I know that you can, and if you say that, what you're saying to me is that we don't believe in the child then either, because if you're telling me a diagnostic symptom is the, is the pathology or the fingerprinting in the child, if we can't lift the pathology out of the child, or if we can't lift it out of the pathogenic parent, then you're saying we can't lift it out of the child, and I just simply don't believe that to be true. And um, after we started to work together, he realized that what I was talking about was the truth, and you know, when we shift how you show up, the beloved chosen parent, I like that word so much better, or that phrase, it just, it just feels so much better and it's authentic. The authentically chosen beloved parent, um, when you shift how you show up and you hold that container of unconditional love and you're pouring into your child unconditional love and you're pulling out the pathology, the rubbish, you're giving your child the best opportunity to do the same thing for the broken child and the other parent. Now listen, it's not the child's responsibility to parent up to either one of you, but the truth is your child already is trying mm -hmm. to manage the emotions of the other parent. So why wouldn't you want to do everything you can to be the most emotionally stable parent you could possibly be and the most unconditionally loving parent you could possibly be and pour into your child as much as you possibly can so that they pour into their other parent because it creates what's best for the child. The child loves both of you no matter what. It doesn't matter how horrible the other parent is. And I've seen some of the worst parents you could ever imagine. Like some of these really high profile cases that you've seen on the internet, you know, I work with those families. Some of these people where you're like, holy crap, you know, I'm glad they're not in my practice. They're in mine. And, you know, the power of, of recovering the kid and teaching them how to be in relationship in a healthy way with both parents is really critical. And I some, love it. 
man. Yeah. I love it, man. <laughs> Dorsey, preach it. Man. Yeah, I Sorry, it. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I love it because it's well, really, you they do love that other parent because yes. you know, they love them because that's part of who they are. And um and One yeah, of the things they can make a difference too. from afar. Sorry, Danica, I think I have a delay. I don't mean to step over you. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that dog. I, I really, really liked how the part where you said the child does not parent up. The child needs to be a child. They need th that childhood. They need to thrive as a child with the security and safety of their parents doing nothing but loving them and guiding them through life so that they can be that good person, that good, you know, that you know, good person and good adult, and they can be a good parent as well, and that they're not repeating mm -hmm. this stuff into their, into the next generation, and that, you know, that's where we've really got to start putting a dent in this, is not letting it, you know, continue on. I agree. Yeah, and that's not interrupted. If it's not interrupted in this generation, it could pass itself down to the next generation yeah. and, and it has so we, it we unconsciously attract to ourselves may very well be the dynamic that we experienced with our parents so and, it uh, is i mean let's just be honest it is the dynamic it, it is what we do we we do it unconsciously over and over time. and over again i've been doing this a little bit less time than you i started in 2006 danica and you know, it is what we do. It is as the child, it's what we repeat our parental patterns. And as parents, we swing our pendulum from how we were parented. We either do the same thing or we swing all the way over to the other side and neither one are, are appropriate. It's somewhere in the middle where sometimes yeah. we need to be more authoritarian and a safety issue. Don't run into the street, right? Or more of a permissive side, which I call conscious in the middle, which is having a dialogue with the child. But in this family dynamic, what I frequently see is you usually have a permissive parent and an authoritarian parent, and there's nothing in the middle, and they exploit each other. Some of the families we work with, we have a, a mother who's borderline and a father who's narcissistic. Can you imagine? We see that all the time and what do we do take the kid i mean sure i'd have a house full of kids i have to get another house right so you know no we empower the child we teach the child how to be in relationship mm -hmm. with both parents parents with pathology they're just adult children of pathology right so they were either psychologically physically or sexually abused or all of the above so we don't abandon the child even in the adult child now first we protect all children from pathology. So it's always a child protection issue, not a custody issue. We protect the children that are being abused. Then we recover the family system. If child protective services applied um, to child psychological abuse, what they do for sexual and physical abuse, this family dynamic would be over, but they don't. We're only in the in child protective services world with child psychological abuse where we were just 20 five, 23 years ago with physical abuse and maybe 10 years before that with sexual abuse. You realize in our lifetime was when they said, we shouldn't be having sex with children. Hmm, duh, right? And that's child abuse. And then, oh, we shouldn't be spanking our children or, or any type of corporal punishment. I mean, that was just when my children were young, right? I, I, my oldest daughter is almost 22. And I remember reading all the new research about spanking and, you mm -hmm. know, all of these things. And, you know, my mom broke a hairbrush on my butt when I was young. So, you know, spanking was commonplace, right? So, you know, we are only in where we are with psychological abuse, where we were just two decades ago, just 20, a little over 20 years ago with, with physical abuse. So it's not surprising when we understand how the system is dysfunctional, we can also approach the, this dysfunctional sy system with empathy. You know, empathy, having empathy is one of the most critical components or, or emotional intelligence skills that we can apply to really resolving and solving anything if we have an empathetic response to it. Right. Exactly. How do you do, what is <laughs> the best for a parent who is like, you have no idea. This person is just out of control. They, they, there is no, no fixing them. Okay. So and, uh, 
you know, what would you, what would you say? I mean, they're obviously so triggered by their point of view and the, maybe the abuse that they endured by their, their other, the other parent. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about the, the chosen parent? The, yes. The the chosen parent. Parent? How do you, how do you get through to the chosen parent that, um, that these tools actually work? You yeah. know, doing whack-a-mole on the, the other parent is not going to work. It's not going to work. Um, that's a really great, great question. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm teaching a class right now called Reunited, a seven-step process to reunite with your adult alienated children. And it's pretty funny because, you know, a lot of people that came into that class, right, are very adversarial and you don't understand and it's too late for me and this isn't going to work. And I say to people that say those things, whatever you believe is true is true. So if you believe it's not going to work, don't sign up for my class because I only want people who are going to do the work and actually um, have success in reuniting with their children. If you're still stuck in your limiting belief, I highly recommend doing the work and in, in shifting how you're showing up in your belief system. If you believe something isn't going to work, it is not going to work. I don't care if it's worked for a million other people. If you don't think it's going to work, it's not going to work. Um, people that come in in that trauma, I remind them that they are traumatized and that in order to recover their children in their unbreakable bond with their child, they need to resolve their own trauma first and they can't resolve their trauma in relationship with their child. It's not gonna work, they're right. They need to resolve their own trauma. One of the, um, you know, it's funny, my class, I was thinking I get it like an hour each week. It's two plus hours every week. It's two hours of, of content and then an hour of Q&A because I just can't condense it as much as I've tried. And, um, but a lot of the work is about um, recovering from their own trauma, the past, uh, their, their childhood trauma, and really identifying the little micro traumas. So for people like that, they're suffering in their micro trauma. Everything in your adult life, everything that's happening to you as, an, as a parent is a manifestation of your belief system created in your childhood. So if you don't know what's created the story that's brought you to where you are today, you need to go and resolve that. And, and so that's what I would say to somebody like that is you've got to re, you've got to release the micro traumas from your childhood and micro traumas are anything that you did or that was done to you in your lower self consciousness so that's the part of our consciousness that is in fear right and where you believe somebody else caused you pain loss or unconsciousness and then you acted out or somebody acted out towards you and you created the story, the belief, right? I'm bad, I deserve to be rejected, whatever the story is, and you keep bringing the patterns of that in your life over and over and over again. So a lot of the work that we do is we teach people to see what their trauma patterns are. What are they? How are you showing up in not just your relationship with your child or your ex? Let's just set that aside for a minute. Let's look at all of the other relationships that you have. How do you show up as an employee or a boss? How do you show up as a friend or a neighbor? How are you showing up in the grocery store with the grocery store clerk or the drive through window? How do you show up? Because you take you wherever you go. So if you're caustic and hostile on social media and people are responding to you that way, hmm, I wonder, right? So this isn't a place of judgment. It's a place of understanding. You take you wherever you go. We do this deep work with a lot of people and um, walking you through the steps is really important. So identifying what it is, what is the story that you made up? What's your rubbish? What's your garbage that mm -hmm. your head trash, I call it. And what do you need to toss out as useless garbage? And how do you transform it? What's the negating truth? So I, you know, I deserve to be rejected because I'm a bad person. No, I'm a good person. And here are the things that demonstrate that, yeah. right? So it's the simple stuff. Raising emotional intelligence in the beloved chosen parent is critical, right? Mm -hmm. You know, having emotional intelligence is the most, the most important skill set that you can have in building healthy relationships. And you mm -hmm. can't build a healthy relationship without them. So you must yeah. do this for yourself in order to do it for your children. Yeah, so what I heard a lot of in there is the importance of understanding every layer of yourself. So we, we talk about the proverbial onion and how you peel back. And sometimes we only take the effort to peel back the <laughs> layers, but we don't realize that there's a lot more layers to deal with. And there's um, sometimes even more troublesome layers down below. So understanding 
being yourself yeah. and really learning and digging. It's a lot of work. And I've gone through it over the last decade. And I will tell you, it is a lot of work, yeah. but it's so worth it because I feel more connected and more authentic today than I ever have. So yeah. it is very important to allow yourself to heal and yeah. to, you know, understand yourself. That's a really good way of putting it. I really thought as I started training coaches and people to do this work that the, that the people that would solve this with me would be the targeted parents. And um, what I've discovered is it's the adult children that are, that are rising up out of the rubble that um, make it off and the, the healers, right. The, the people that will solve this. And when I first started this, you know, I was knocking on everybody's door that was a bona fide expert. Like, what do I do? What do I do? And there was no solution. Nobody offered a solution to me. It was just, you know, we'll just reunite with your dad. It was like, well, okay, but I try, you know, we're, we don't know what we're doing. And then it was like, well, just don't let your kids be alienated. I'm like, oh, but how, <laughs> right? There was like, oh, okay, what do I do? And it was like crickets. And, and then even just, um, you know, back then and Danica, you know, there was nothing really on the internet. There was like Douglas Darnell's website. Um, I started working with Jane Major in 2006 and um, on accident, I took her class because I was dating somebody who was alienated and I didn't realize that I was being alienated because my kids were so young and I didn't realize I was alienated. But when the man I was dating, his daughter was 12 when she like parachuted into my life, that's the age I was that I decided to stop seeing my dad. And, you know, and, and I spent my teenage years really making false allegations against my dad and really being a terrible teen. And um, when this kid dropped down in my life, it was like, I started having all of these epiphanies, right? And I wanted to save her and I was going everywhere. And I flew to Los Angeles at the time I was in North Carolina and, um, you know, to take this parenting class and it ended up being a certification program. And that was really the beginning of my career in this space. I had retired from the mortgage business and, you know, I had no idea what I was really going to be doing. I just knew I'd be working with kids and, you know, here I am today. So, you know, it was kind of funny even Jane Major, she, she did, I worked very closely with her and she would say all the time, there's no solution, right? So even one of the biggest voices early on in this space, she would say, there's really no solution for this. And um, I remember being very frustrated and also, you know, very, I'm a very pig headed person. I just will not take no for an answer. So to me, if there's a problem in a wor in the world, the solution also exists. Somebody just hasn't connected the dots. So we just need to connect the dots. And I was even in touch with Randy Rand from Family Bridges early on. And I was like, you know, I'm a coach and this is what I'm doing. I got my certification. What do I do? And he's like, Oh, coaching. That's interesting. But then he was like, this was also in 2006. And he was like, no, I'm not going to teach you. And I was like, cause he was going through his own stuff and I was like, okay. And you know, off on my own, I went probably very similar to you, Danica. I was like, what do I do? How do I fix this? Who's going to help me? And the internet in the mid two thousands, there was just nothing. Internet websites were static, you know, video wasn't a thing like this, you know, it just yeah, wasn't like, like it is. You're like, why are my kids acting like aliens? Yes. And, you're, and you're like, and then you, then you do a search on Google or whatever. I don't know. If, uh, yeah. Like and Yahoo, then, Yahoo, it was Yahoo. Yahoo. <laughs> that's it, yeah. And then finally you, there's this, this crazy word called parental alienation shows up yeah. and then more and more and more. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I didn't know that word until after my dad died. So 2018, uh, we knew what happened. We always knew about the abduction. But 2018 comes, and right before he died, we started piecing some of it together, but we still didn't have a word yeah. for it. And then the more I started digging, and I started out on Twitter, which is why I'm on, more on Facebook now, because Twitter was, oof, um, <laughs> there, <laughs> that was brutal. That was a brutal lesson. <laughs> but, but, you know, there was, there was so much information, sometimes almost too much information. And I had to, na I'm still navigating through it sometimes yeah. trying to figure out what is the right, you know, right phrase to use in my situation, because mm -hmm. I'm not the typical alienated child because I didn't believe my mom. I had my own bond with my dad. I didn't have a bond with my mom. So what am I? And mm -hmm. it takes so much more research and stuff to really kind of figure it out for the, each circumstance. 
Mm-hmm. So yeah. someone told me I was a hostage child. So I had to, you know, absorb that. What does that mean? You know, there's so many terms and labels, like you were saying that, you know, it, it really is simple enough to just narrow it down to what is really going on? What relationships do you have? The bond, the attachment and that kind of stuff and trying to repair that and restore that. That's it's what I love a- about you know, we're, we're just about out of time, but I just, okay. I did want to put in the importance of, of coaching, of, of having somebody along, holding their, mm-hmm. your hand along the way, mm-hmm. helping you to navigate so that you're not totally absorbed in digging up and finding things for yourself. They're kind of that wisdom that mm-hmm. says, go here, go here, help, help, you know, and they help you to understand things. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you are in a state of, fear and survival, you're literally biologically not thinking. Right. Able to really think. Exactly. Yeah. They're in the, the spin zone of the, uh, I call it the, the destabilized cortisol, cortisol spin zone. All <laughs> problem solving side of the brain is completely on holiday having a margarita over here while you're spin, 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 destabilized, flooded with cortisol, can't think for yourself. That sounded uh, about right. That was a pretty good analogy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll say this about coaching. You know, your coach's job, a coach's job isn't to solve the problem for you. Your coach's job is to get in the weeds with you and help you learn the skills so that you can solve your own problem. Because the truth is you can't be saved by somebody else. You must do the work. And people come to us and I turn people away saying, you're not ready here for coaching. Here are the things that you need to do go do this and then come back when you're ready. And, and so I'll say for coaches, cause I've been coaching for a really long time and have coached thousands and thousands of hours and clients, um, which is know when the client is ready. Don't take on a client. If you're a coach that isn't ready for coaching because they'll suck the life out of you and they'll they'll expect you to do all of these things for them and it's not your job so Mm -hmm. your job isn't to solve the problem for people so as a coach and some people will say to me well you're a coach and you provide advice and i'm like you know i'm very clear on when people come to work with me am i acting in the role of a consultant which is to provide advice or am i acting in the role of coach and our our language and our paperwork is very clear. What are you hiring me to do? Mm -hmm. And it's really important to really delineate those two because you could get yourself into a lot of trouble when you're dealing with this family dynamic and they're going to want to say all kinds of things and because they're suffering, parents are suffering and we want to help people release their suffering and have a handful, because that's probably all you'll be able to find, of competent mental health providers that are trauma specialists that will help them solve trauma. Not trauma specialists like, let me tell you all about my trauma, you know, but here are the things you need to do to resolve your trauma. Okay. That's really, really important. Find the right practitioner. It's like, it can be the difference between recovering yourself and your children and decades of, of no contact. Definitely. Definitely. No, I- I love that because there's a lot of, you know, everything has exploded into everybody calling themselves a coach, Mm -hmm. but they really need to get that, that coaching is not just, you know, dispensing advice Mm -hmm. and telling people how they should live. That's Mm -hmm. totally wrong approach because Mm -hmm. I can tell you as a mom, when my kids come come to me with a problem, if I give them the advice, because this is what moms do, to tell them how to fix it, and we walk away frustrated because yes. of course they're not gonna take our advice. They just really wanted to hear themselves. Yes. But I always <laughs> compare it to being a teacher. Okay, so if a math teacher, if you know the student comes to you and says, I don't know how to figure out this problem, if the math teacher were to tell you the answer, Mm-hmm. that student would not know how to do the problem. Exactly. You know, hundred percent right. Yeah. It's a uh, conscious co-parenting or conscious parenting is the same as coaching. So we're not here to tell people what to do. We're, and, and you're right. If you have clients, I mean, nothing is more frustrating than when I say go left and they go right. And I'm like, why are you doing that? Cause they get in what I call the con- convince and resist dance. I don't care how right you are. I don't care how you show them a thousand times, a thousand other people who went left and this is why it worked. 
if you try to convince them that this is what they need to do, they will go right and you're looking at you like, mm -hmm, I'm going over here, like, what are, why are you doing that? No, there's an alligator over there, but they do it anyways because they're in the convince and resist dance. And it's this way with parents, children, practitioners, lawyers, judges, you know, you, you have to lead people down a path by illuminating the path and saying, listen, you're at a fork in a road. If you go left, I, I know that this is what's going to happen. If you go right, this is what's going to happen. But ultimately, it's your decision. And here are the things that you need to make the right decision for you. Good luck. Let me know how it turns out for you. Right? I, had so, somebody, I was taking a, a, trauma, a brain course for children. And one of the things they said is, how many parents in here watch your children climb a tree and you yell up, don't fall. <laughs> the child is going to listen to you and they're going to fall because they have to process the word first, don't, and yeah. then what? Fall. So fall. they said what you should be saying is hold on instead right. of don't fall. So that, you know, it's like it's the way you're changing your words so that kids can understand exactly what you're saying. So I, it's a little off topic, but kind of goes along with. It. But no, you're, you're right. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. I mean, in my background as a teacher, that's the thing is they always said, okay, make your class rules, uh, always do's, never don'ts, because yes. the brain does not, like the kid, especially the kid, is like, mm -hmm. um, skips over the word don't. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and then just does the next word, which is uh, fall. <laughs> all of us do it. We all, we all yeah. do that. I, 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 in coaching with weight loss too, like anything that you don't want, I always say to people, what do you want? You can ask anybody that's ever like worked with me. The first thing I ask them is, what do you want? They're like, what, what do you mean? I'm like, what do you want? And they're like, well, what do you mean what I want? I'm like, I'm asking you, what do you want? They have no idea. Like, uh, uh, uh. I thought you were going to tell me. Right. And they'll say things like, well, I want my child to love me. Great. Your child loves you. Anything else? They're like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, your child loves you. Your child loves you no matter what, because the purest form of unconditional love is from a parent to, I mean, a child to a parent. You, as the parent, are so arrogant. You think that you're unconditionally loving, but if you were, you wouldn't be in this position. So you're not, because nobody gets into adulthood unless you're Jesus Christ or Amma or one of these gurus to be unconditionally loving. So I'm just telling you right now, you're not. Do you have all these expectations for your children? Do you want them to go to a good college? Yes. Do you want them to get straight A's? Yes. Do you want them to do these? Yes. Okay, well, those are all conditions. And so if we take all the conditions out, right? then you step into the place of, of purity. But the truth is, you don't know what you want. So I'm telling you, your children loves you. Done, we don't need to coach. Is that really what you want? Oh, well, you know, I want my children to, you know, um, it's always about them, right? I want my children to be nice to me. Okay, well, what are you going to do differently? What are you doing right now, right? And so it's like, you start getting into this dialogue in the beginning before I even work with somebody. And it's like, what do you want? They don't even know. Half the time people are so traumatized or destabilized, they're so focused on what they don't want and how bad the other parent is, they have no idea what they even want. <laughs> it's like, True. It's like, okay, oh. Um, we, oh man, we are so over. over. But that means that you have to come back. Okay. <laughs> well, and on that note, she is coming back. She'll be yes. on Green Talk today on Friday. Oh, and yes. Also, um, she, you're going to be speaking at our Guardian, um, Guardians and Gatekeepers virtual conference now. Yay. Yes. Okay. We're expanding right. that. So that was good information, too. So we, we will be seeing more of Dorsey. Awesome. Right. Well, thank you all for joining us at Custody Matters Live tonight. We will see you again next week. Thank you. I just want to point out it's Dorsey, Danica, and Don, the triple Ds. That's right. Hey. <laughs> <laughs>